cultural groups are you actually worried about insulting that requires this disclaimer at the beginning of the game? Besides looking cool, what exactly is this assassin hoping to accomplish by standing out in the open other than make himself a target? He's way too far from the pirate ship to jump, and there's a naval battle and a hurricane going on. And speaking of naval battles, I'm pretty certain any captain who's had the job for more than a day would not try to fight a battle in a hurricane especially when it's your one ship up against an armada. This assassin somehow gets on board the pirate ship and kills the captain, even though this ship is nowhere near any of the other ships, and since he's not wet, I can only assume he didn't swim. Remind me again why this assassin thought it was a good idea to board this ship and kill the captain up close? The British ships firing on it were more than enough to sink it, and the ship blows up a second later, which likely would have killed the captain anyway. In fact, we find out later that there was really no reason for him to kill the captain at all, since Duncan had already completed his assignment for the Templars and this captain wasn't a target. I'm curious about how the person using the Animus to view memories knows when to go back even further in history to view scenes of Edward and his wife to add backstory. Does he think to himself, this naval battle is too boring. Let's go watch his struggling marriage. H how long would you be gone with these privateers? A year, I reckon. Two at the most. All right. No more than two. Promise me. Fellas, if you remain silent when your wife asks you to promise her something like this, you are not in for a long relationship. Either that or you know you're on camera and it's going to fade to black any second and you want to create some cheap drama. Edward is a good 30 feet underwater here and was unconscious. All the other sailors around him are dead and their situation was the same as his. So how did Edward survive drowning? It goes from night to day and the time it takes to swim about 100 feet to the beach. I know this is a major nitpick, but Edward's teeth are shockingly white for a British sailor in the early 18th century. Havana. I must get to Havana. Well, I'll just build us another ship, will I? I can pay you. Even if you offer to pay Edward, what exactly makes you think he can get you off this island? He has no ship, which he summed up for you pretty well. Duncan chooses to escalate a situation that was in no need of escalating, since Edward made it clear he was interested in his deal. I honestly can't tell you why Edward is chasing Duncan through the jungle. He really has no reason to other than that's the objective the game gives him. Also, why can Edward already do all of the parkour that assassins can? He's just a pirate. He hasn't been trained in any of this. Yeah, later he explains it's because he's used to climbing mast rigging, but no sailors in the past have ever acquired parkour skills like this from climbing ropes. Keep your distance! If Duncan had a second working pistol on him, why didn't he kill Edward with that after his first failed to fire? He just threw that one down on the beach and ran. Looting this dead guy will require me to drag his body an absurdly long distance before rummaging through his pockets. That's the pirate way. Senor Duncan Walpole, I accept your most generous offer and await your arrival with eagerness. Though I will not know your face by sight, I believe I can recognize the costume made infamous by your secret order. If Torres hadn't spelled out in detail that he'd never seen Duncan before, Edward wouldn't know that he could dress in Duncan's assassin clothes and attend the meeting in his place. He might as well have added that the key to the safe is behind the painting in his office and his wife loves younger men. Mr. Walpole, let's collect your reward. Before you start making plans to con the governor, you should worry about the real and present danger you are in. It's almost like Edward knows that just around the corner there's a random ship that will get him off the island. I need you to move your head and look at these lights just here. Look up. That's it. Down. So far, so good. If the job interviews I've had in the past were as simple as looking up and down at some lights, I wouldn't be here on YouTube making fun of video games. You're gonna need this. There you go. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, bonjour. C'est bon? It works? At this distance, your voice would not become inaudible just because you start talking over a Bluetooth headset. Maybe you saw Liberation? That was our first title powered by Animus Tech. This game has the balls to try to sell me other Assassin's Creed games. Also, why would Abstergo Entertainment release games about the Assassins? You know, with the people they are at constant war with and are often assassinated by? Shouldn't they be releasing experiences about Templars? In fact, why would the Templars release anything that informs the public about the fact that they've been trying to control the world since the Crusades or even that they exist? Also, I just want to point out that if technology that allowed people to relive the lives of famous people existed, there would be a huge market for history porn. Just throwing that one out there. C'est bon, c'était prêt. Magnifique. Merci. I've heard more French in the first 10 minutes of this game than I did all of Assassin's Creed Unity. This is for you. The primary tool of our trade. Your communicator. I believe you mean tablet, since the Bluetooth headset you gave him earlier is what all the communicating is done over. What project? Sample 17, the Kenway line. Hey them, Connor. Stop trying to sell me Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed 4. Just a second ago, Bonnet was counting multiple crates of sugar being unloaded. Once the camera changes, we see that there was only one crate of sugar on the dock, with a second just being unloaded. Then he picks up a crate of sugar that was stacked on top of the first, even though the second crate was placed on the dock next to it. And he only takes one crate with him to sell to the bar, even though two crates were unloaded. I'll get us a better view. What are we looking for? Uh, a tavern! Instead of asking for directions, I think I'll climb to the top of a church and have a look. 
Seems sensible. Map synchronization. A mechanic so unfun and pointless that it's not only in every Ubisoft game, but Warner Brothers is putting it in their games as well. Look, game developers, if I wanted to survey plots of land, I would have joined a construction company while letting myself go and objectifying women. So don't make me do it in a video game. The surveying thing, I mean. I can do the letting myself go and objectifying women thing, no problem. This guy in the bar senses a main character and stares angrily at him because he knows he's about to start a barroom brawl for no good reason. Alright, come on, let's follow them and recover my maps. I hope you like tailing missions because that makes up the majority of the mission types in this game. The soldiers confiscated Bonnet's sugar after the bar fight. However, he only brought one crate of sugar with him. The fort where they stored the sugar, however, has both crates. British, facial scars, trench coat. Spoiler, he's a villain. I must say, my wife has a terrible eye for description. I'm sorry. My wife. You met her some years ago at the Percy's Masquerade Ball. She called you devilishly handsome. Obviously a lie to stoke my jealousy. Woods does the villain fake-out cliché where he says something that makes you think he's seen through Edward's disguise only to reveal it was all a joke. She called you devilishly handsome. Obviously a lie to stoke my jealousy. <laughs> I just called you ugly. Let's laugh about it. Have your choice. Where did you find all these? <laughs> I did not find them. I took them. These are souvenirs. And I just happened to carry them around with me in a box should I ever come across an assassin who switched sides and lost his original wrist blades. You'd be amazed at how often that happens. Forgive my caution, but were you able to salvage from these pirates the items you promised me? Duncan did not take either of those two items from the pirate captain he killed. The ship exploded right after he assassinated the captain. So how he got his hands on the blood vial cube and map of the assassin's hideouts is beyond me. If he'd already gotten these things, why did he risk everything to kill a random pirate captain when he was on his way to meet Torres? To guide our wayward souls till they've reached a quiet road. To guide all wayward desire till impassioned hearts are cool. To guide all wayward minds to safe and sober thought. Either the Templar initiation ceremony only permits three people to join at a time, or Torres was just fortunate that he only had three new Templars to initiate, because the Templar Creed isn't long enough for more without creating an awkward silence when you hand the fourth person a ring. Something that I feel is worth bringing up is that the Templars have been getting their asses handed to them since the Crusades, yet at the start of every game they are back in power and the assassins have their backs against the wall. The Templars never seem to suffer any setbacks for their numerous losses. They're like the Illuminati if it was run by Team Rocket. With its power, kings will fall, clergy will cower and the hearts and minds of the world will be ours. To evil! According to old tales, the blood of a sage is required to enter the observatory. You just became a Templar. How do you know so much about the Precursor race and sages already? Despite being shot with a dart that puts you to sleep, Edward remains mostly unaffected. If your plan was to kill the sage to keep the Templars from getting their hands on him, you really didn't need to cut his hands free first. 1,000 reals for those maps. That's what? A hundred pound at most? How's a man supposed to become rich in these times with a miser like Torres running the world? In the early 18th century, 100 pounds would be a year's salary for modest work. You have nothing to complain about. I'd like to see this observatory the governor's going on about. He said it were like a device that could follow people around and show where they were. And imagine what a thing like that would be worth. Sell that to the right person and I'd be the richest pirate privateer in the West Indies. Or, hear me out. You could use the power to see what everyone else is doing to make money on your own. Think bigger, Edward. The good old cutscene sucker punch, when you need to take out the main character as quickly as possible even if it does make his ability to fight off dozens of men in-game seem weird. What is your true name, Rogue? Torres has no reason to doubt who Edward says he is or believe he helped the sage escape. Yeah, he found Edward surrounded by a pile of dead soldiers, but that shouldn't make him think he's not Duncan. And he has no reason to suspect Edward is working for the assassins, since he witnessed Edward kill scores of them earlier and retrieve the sage for him, plus handing over the map with locations to assassin bases. He's more than earned a chance to explain himself by this point. How does the Animus know to put black edges and filters on specific flashbacks? Isn't the whole thing a computer-assisted flashback? And there I am, a man of quality. With a thousand doubloons spilling from my pockets like drops of rain, I can see it. I'm not sure if this is a metaphor for Edward being delusional or just a bug, but you can literally see nothing outside that window. It takes Edward and Adewale all of 10 seconds to escape the restraints. If it's that simple to free yourself, why can't the other prisoners just yank the bar loose as well instead of having Edward rescue them? Edward finds a better assassin robe just lying around on this ship for no reason. As for the rest, half of the foremast and half of the main. Let's outrun this hurricane! Edward would be good at rap battles. The funnest part of this game is the stuff that's not an Assassin's Creed game. Did it rub you wrong when I took this brig as mine own? <laughs> it was the sort of rub I have learned to enjoy, sailing among faces of such fairness. That's racist. 
Wow, that feels weird to say to someone who was a slave until a short while ago. I'm going to go visit Tumblr and feel guilty about being white for a while. Most of these men wouldn't accept you as a captain. But not me, because I'm the main character and I'm incredibly forward-thinking and ahead of the times on the issue of race and slavery. You let him carry a pistol, do you? That's racist. Ah, uh, that feels much better. Thanks for that. Aye, it's an old legend. Like El Dorado or the Fountain of Youth. None of these guys notice that Kit is a woman, despite the fact that her voice actress doesn't even try to sound like a man. It's worth more than gold, Thatch. 10,000 times above what we could pull off any Spanish ship. All you have to go on about the observatory is what Torres told you. And who's to say that he was correct or it's even still there? You've bought into what would essentially be magic to your understanding of things. Why, look. It's the bastard son of the late William Kidd. Still a mere boy, and yet... Ten times the demon his father was. Condescending mocking uses an awkward character introduction. Did you steal that costume from a dandy in Havana? No, sir. I found this on a corpse. One that was walking about and talking shite to my face only moments before. No, you actually did find this one in Havana. The one you took off Duncan you left on the treasure ship. And another tailing mission. Get used to this sin. It happens a lot. This may be the best Assassin's Creed game of the last few years, but it still has to remind you that it's an Assassin's Creed game from time to time. I know the place. Natural stronghold used by a French captain named Ducasse. Julian Ducasse, the Templar. Name's right. Didn't know he had a title. I know the man. And if he sees my ship, he'll know it from his time in Havana, meaning he may wonder at who's sailing her now. Ducasse never saw the Jack Daw, though. You didn't steal the ship until after you were found out and imprisoned on the Spanish treasure fleet. And Ducasse wasn't around to see that escape. As is custom among our kind, we do not plunge headlong into folly on the orders of a single madman but act according to our own collective madness. <laughs> the object of our attention is a square-rigged galleon, and we want her for the advantage she'll bring Nassau. So I'll put it to the vote. All those in favor of storming this cove and taking this ship. Stomp and shout I! Those who oppose, whimper nay. You can't exactly have a fair vote if you describe the nay vote as being cowardly. Alright crew, who wants to prove how big their balls are by helping me steal this galleon? Say aye! Those who want to stay on the ship and give each other makeovers? Nay! Also, despite the fact that Edward holds his vote about stealing the galleon, the actual stealing and assassinating is done solo by him, while the entire crew remains on the ship and does nothing, making this vote pointless. This game made Dukasi out to be an assassin killing badass, yet he goes down like a bitch. I just saw you were logging out, so I thought I'd stop by and give you something. A little welcome gift. We give awards to our top-notch employees for doing quality work, and they're nice to have since there's no official bonus scheme here. This explains a lot. No wonder Ubisoft games are so uninspired and samey. Their employees are paid in action figures. Pretty raw stuff. Obviously, we need to scrub off some of the dirt to make it family-friendly. Maybe give Edward a voice like uh, James Bond or something. More of a ladies' man. I honestly think these sections inside Abstergo Entertainment were based off what it's like to make an Assassin's Creed game for Ubisoft. Computer hacking feels a lot like the type of free game you download on your phone. Why would you need a courier to send a file? All you even do is transfer the file from your tablet to hers. Just send it over the net. Kit has Edward meet her at a secret assassin's village, yet doesn't tell him about the assassins that live there. So it's kind of fortunate that the game doesn't let you kill them while you sneak around. Since that would make Edward joining the assassins later kind of difficult. You could have just told him to meet you on the beach. Did you see the man they called the sage? Aye. Would you recognize his face if you saw it again? Rather than just draw Edward a picture or describe what the sage looks like, they have Edward go through a temple full of puzzles so he can look at a statue. And I'm not even sure why they care if Edward can recognize the sage, since they already know what he looks like. Otherwise, how do they know to target him in Havana? Suddenly, I'm getting Uncharted Drake's fortune flashbacks. You're certain it's him? Aye. It's the eyes that mark him. Well, really, it's just the eyes, so anyone with heterochromia could be the sage. Though it is kind of weird that the sage has kept the same mustache through multiple lives. Though in Assassin's Creed Unity, he doesn't have the mustache or the different colored eyes. We like this story, Torres. And we want to help you finish it. But we're going to do it our way. Using you. And your gold. Why would Torres go along with this? If Edward gets the sage, Torres will never find the observatory. And furthermore, why would Edward expect Torres to go along with his plan? He doesn't really have any leverage to make Torres do what he wants after he leaves. Kid is eating an apple to look like more of an asshole in this scene. We are now telling someone who is in turn telling another person. Perhaps another day. What? Next time, see to it that we are not followed. Deal with this! It would have actually been smarter for Torres to tell the slaver that he was followed. That way he could have cut Edward out of the deal and possibly have him killed. But instead, Torres seemed to be going along with a plan that would have completely screwed him. Seriously, all it took for her to disguise herself as a man was tying her hair back? Never mind the obviously female voice and face. 
Am I supposed to be rooting for the assassins in this game when one of them just coldly cuts down two English soldiers who thought they were helping an injured woman? Because I don't. Now that Mary has been revealed as a woman, she immediately gets taken hostage, even though she's an assassin and has her right arm free from the looks of things. You know, the arm where her wrist blade is. It's at this point that the game grinds to a halt as you have to spend several missions helping Blackbeard find medicine for Nassau. This entire section can be sinned with a simple skip, and that's what I'm gonna do. I speak for everyone who's ever played this game when I say, fuck this tailing mission. Fuck this tailing mission in particular. Once again, a courier isn't necessary to send files. Just download Dropbox or something. Oh, don't sit there like a barrel of wet fish. We're celebrating my retirement! Retirony. The act of stating one's imminent retirement from a dangerous line of work, only to be killed shortly afterward. Had this not been a cutscene, these soldiers wouldn't have posed much of a problem for Edward. But since it is, they can hold him off while Blackbeard dies. I can only conclude that Edward has poor peripheral vision, since attacks from his side always seem to take him by surprise. So thatch has been chopped. Fuck's sake. Did Edward start this conversation with news of Blackbeard's death, then just start playing with a candle while Vane repeated what he just said? Because that is some weird shit if so. This captain claims the princess sails out of Kingston every few months. All right. We'll set a course. You made ash of my sails and rigging jackanapes. You owe me a share. Oh! But damn it, Vane! Oh, Charles, what a surly devil you are. Don't fuck with me, Jack. Oh, but it's my mandate to fuck with you, Charles. Discount Captain Jack Sparrow. I was waiting for that one to show up. Ah, see, oh, the boys and I had a bit of counsel while you were wasting time with this slot. And, um, well... They figured I'd be a fitter captain than you reckless dogs. How did Rackham manage to organize a mutiny during the battle? Vane's crew had to ditch their ship and board the Jackdaw, then they boarded the slavery ship and took it over. So not only did Rackham convince Vane's crew to mutiny, he had to convince the crew of the Jackdaw to do so as well while the battle was underway. And Rackham is a crazy drunk, so I don't see how he inspired confidence in anyone. That's a nice camera angle. I love it when I have to squint to see the characters. One scene transitioned later and Vane has gone insane and for some reason Edward got rid of all of his weapons and clothing, despite the fact that he could use them to hunt with and fend off a crazed pirate. Start not to follow! Jesus, you've lost your head, man! It's a fair exchange for finding these flintlocks and grenados. Listen, Vane, we can hunt with those guns. <laughs> not only did he find working guns, but gunpowder and bullets to load them with. Kind of miraculous, actually. I see that the good ship Deus Ex Machina has arrived to rescue Edward from the island. That's twice in this game that's happened. Rickham is captured off screen and the jackdaw returned to Edward like it was no big deal. And Adewale wasn't sold into slavery like Rickham mentioned doing during the mutiny. And no retribution is handed out to Edward's crew for said mutiny. So that entire mutiny was utterly pointless. I haven't silently followed this many people since I was in high school. Edward Kenway! Imagine my surprise at seeing your jackdaw anchored there. Hornigold knows Edward is here because he saw the jackdaw anchored just outside this building. Yet when the cutscene ends and Tasky was getting away, the jackdaw is nowhere in sight. What's our course, Captain? Princher Bay, Quartermaster. We're sailing for the coast of Africa. Africa looks suspiciously like the West Indies, which Edward just sailed from. Captain Kenway. Edward walks right past Roberts who is off screen and doesn't see him. How do I know this? You can see Roberts' shadow in this shot, meaning he was only a few feet to the right as Edward walked up to this dead body. And there was nothing for Roberts to hide behind, as evidenced by the lack of shadow of anything else. You know I'm as good as my word. How does he know that? He's met you two times, once when you captured him for the Templars and the other when you killed the man he worked for. Funny that. With scurvy, the fix is more pleasant than the cause. When you catch a dose from a horn, must treat it with quicksilver. You're fonder of getting the disease than you are of curing it. Got it. Sex is better than mercury poisoning. I guess that was supposed to be profound? Also, you're a married man. How do you know so much about horrors and STDs? None of these sailors notice Edward throwing their flag off the ship and the dinghy that catches it. And if Edward had to steal a Portuguese flag to slip past the fleet, why didn't the ship they were stealing the flag from notice the pirate flag on Edward's ship and open fire when they started talking to each other during the distraction? We've been spotted. Took them long enough. In that fog and at that distance? Not likely. Lawrence Prince's blood. Useless now. Woods Rogers, Ben Hornigold, even Torres himself. How can you tell whose blood is whose if the cubes aren't labeled? This game didn't get the memo that using a crystal skull as a plot device is a huge sin after that movie that must not be named. The observatory lets you see what anyone in the world is doing as long as you have a blood sample. This is getting pretty close to Harry Potter magic at this point. How do you explain this even with precursor technology? Also, why did the precursors make the observatory look like a human skull? Or a skull at all for that matter? Was that really the only shape they could use? We'll be masters of the ocean with that. Oh, such ambition. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Ah, ah, ah. Mine is an evil laugh. According to Roberts, he is the only man who can open the way to the observatory. Yet, after he locks Edward inside, he finds another way out that leads conveniently back to the beach. And there was a huge hole in the ceiling as well. 
I know the king's bounty on your head is a large one, and I intend to collect. If that's the case, why did you try to kill him by locking him up in the observatory? Have you ever seen the inside of a Jamaican prison, boy? Have you? This line about prisons only works in modern times, since in this time period, pretty much every prison was a hellhole. If you're anxious, that'll pass. It's the midazolam. I'm sorry about this, but... We've had so many security breaches, we were forced to take drastic action. You guys drug your employee while he was still in the Animus, and somehow put him in another wing of the building while he was still logged into and using the Animus? Couldn't you have tapped him on the shoulder and told him you have a security situation and he needs to go to a safe room rather than doing what should be impossible? And... Olivier is missing. He left for Chicago two days ago, but... No one's seen him since. That's because he was killed by Nathan in Watch Dogs, even though it makes no sense for those two fictional universes to be one and the same. So the IT guy's plan was to trick you into hacking the mainframe, then watch a trailer for Abstergo's pirate game, at which point Juno will appear and take over your body, but doesn't because it's too soon for her. I've tried writing this sin multiple ways and it still sounds batshit crazy when I read it. If you would lend me your aid, I can promise you safe passage from this place. I'll need weapons. You are comfortable with this, I am told. Were you carrying around extra wrist blades as souvenirs as well? Normally when I think of a prison escape, it involves speed. You just happen to keep an exact copy of Edward's assassin robes in your rowboat on the off chance you would encounter him? You even said when you rescued him that you weren't here for him but Mary and Anne. So realistically, you would have brought clothes for them. For I have dipped my hands in muddied waters, and withdrawing them, find tis better to be a commander than a common man! You chew that hallucinatory scenery, Robert. You put me on the spot, Addy. After leaving me with Robert, I should have hard feelings about seeing you here. You should. You should also be questioning why he left you to die at the observatory, and why he suddenly came back months later. And what do you think of our creed? It's hard to say. For if nothing is true, then why believe anything? And if everything is permitted, why not chase every desire? Why indeed? Following a legit question about the tenets of your creed with a non-answer in no way makes it sound wise or deep. You're not Aztec Yoda. All it does is make it clear that Ubisoft picked a phrase that sounds cool but doesn't really mean anything. In prison, I heard stories of the infamous Anne Bonny and Mary Reed taking on the King's Navy together. Just the pair of you. They were in prison at the same time as you though, and at the same prison no less, and the two of them only teamed up as a pair at the exact moment you found the observatory. You even saw them do that through the Crystal Skull, and that was only four months ago. Wood survives this. I think that's a first for the series. Once again, Africa looks no different from the West Indies. I feel like this game is trying to get itself over with quickly. It's almost like the devs found that the game hit the 12 hour playtime mark and decided to wrap it all up. So Roberts is dead and Edward now has a skull. The game should be over since the threat has been removed and the Templars have been stopped, but yet it carries on for another 30 minutes or so. Through the blood of the governor, we can see through his eyes. Where did you get your hands on Taurus's blood? You left the crate of blood samples back at the observatory. And even if you did take them with you, you were arrested and thrown in prison for half a year right after that. Keep this safe. Just in case. Yes, keep this incredibly powerful device safe, person I've never met before. That vial was labeled Taurus, but held the blood of his second. Where's he gone? Left port this morning, heading west along the coast. The observatory. How does Torres know where the observatory is? No one ever told him of its location. He even asked Edward about where it was during his trial. And how did he get inside? It was made very clear that only Roberts could open the door and he closed it when he left. And why even go after Torres in the first place? You have the skull. Torres going to the observatory does nothing since there's nothing there. Torres shouldn't count as a final villain if he doesn't pose a threat to something. The violence he caused with this thing would be subtle but heavy. Then throw it in the ocean! Don't bring it back to the observatory, you fool! What's this Torres doing looking for the observatory? When you're holding the treasure yourself? Torres doesn't know I have it. So why bring it to him and risk its capture? I'd like him to know I have it, just before he dies. But he doesn't. You never tell him that and you leave the skull on the boat. You essentially risk losing everything you've worked for so you can teabag Torres after you kill him. And then you don't even teabag him. So Roberts was resurrected in modern times as the IT guy, having you hack Abstergo computers so he could bring back Juno, his precursor girlfriend. When that failed, he tries to kill you by pumping you full of drugs. But then you don't die because he didn't use a lethal dose for some reason, even though the syringe was clearly full. In a world where pirates rule the waves, these men will discover that nothing is sacred and everyone is committed to rum. Just... What the hell, Ubisoft? Do you understand tone? My character was nearly murdered by a resurrected Black Bart Roberts, and now you made me watch a cheesy trailer for what amounts to a game I just played? I would honestly do a react video to this ending if it wouldn't get taken down by the Fine Brothers. Of all the money that I have, I spent it in 
could come. That singing style is a tad too modern for the 18th century. Is it hard to talk about Caroline, Jenny? About your mother? Mm, no. She passed some years ago. This game waits until the credits roll to inform you that Edward's wife back in England is dead. Honestly, I ain't even mad. Well played, Ubisoft. Well played. 35 minutes of credits. There are save icons that popped up during this. I never thought a credit sequence would need checkpoints. Your hardity, being a pirate is a red to Do what you want, cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate.